안녕하세요. K 치과 강충규. I'm Dr. Kang Chung Yoo of K Dental Clinic. People have different faces and different oral status. Depending on the problem, the treatment changes. More than anything else, we need to understand the surgery method right for the patient and if we understand what is needed, we can get successful treatment. The first steps are whether you're going to do one-stage surgery or two-stage surgery. If you look at the contents, implant surgery method, two-stage surgery, one-stage surgery, the pros and cons, and the indications, and cover screw and healing abutment, which are used in one-stage and two-stage surgery, will be looked at. First is implant surgery method. The method can be divided depending on the number of time you do incision on the gingiva. First, one stage or two stage surgery. Let's look at the pros of one stage surgery. You do incision once and connect healing abutment, so trauma is reduced and treatment period is also reduced. Because healing abutment is connected, you can check mobility of healing abutment and can predict prognosis of the fixture after surgery. Early diagnosis is possible and if it fails, relatively bone loss is less. On the other hand, because you connect healing abutment immediately, fail can occur due to mastication in that area. There's a higher possibility, and initial stability is slightly more unstable. There's a higher possibility of epithelial tissue ingrowth more so than two-stage surgery. If you look at the two-stage surgery, you do incision, put in cover screw, and then it is closed. Secondary surgery is done. Implants initial stability becomes increased. And because it is closed, the epithelial tissue ingrowth can be prevented and there can be better contact. Also, there is less possibility of fail due to mastication because it's covered with gingiva. On the other hand, because you need to do surgery once again, there is discomfort on the part of the patient and treatment period becomes longer. If there is inflammation, early detection is difficult, so there can be that, uh, a bigger possibility of bone resorption. Two-stage surgery leads a stable bone integration and it's a traditional approach for bone healing. Relatively, there's a less possibility of infection and failure due to occlusal loading. Because there's a second surgery, there is patient discomfort and treatment period becomes longer. Therefore, generally, because it is burdensome for the surgeon as well as for the patient, we prefer one-stage surgery, but at times, inevitably, you have to do two-stage surgery. The biggest factor is weak initial stability. Stable initial stability is 20 newton centimeters, and it is below that 10 or 15 newton centimeter. If it is below 10 newton centimeter, because the initial stability is weak, you need to do two-stage surgery in order to increase implant stability. If you look at number two, during healing period for mastication, when the patient needs to use denture, you cannot use denture on top of healing abutment. In those cases, you need to do two-stage surgery and use cover screw so that denture usage is possible. When a lot of GBR is done or if GBR success is essential because you need primary closure, a two-stage surgery where gingiva is covered needs to be done. 
If the patient is heavy smoker or is unable to maintain oral hygiene, two-stage surgery is recommended. In the case the patient needs to chew unilaterally where implant is going to be placed, or occlusion with antagonist cannot be avoided due to lack of entourage space. Rather than healing abutment, cover screw is used to cover the gingiva. Two-stage surgery is more favorable in those cases. As you can see, because of the opposing teeth, interarch space is very limited. In those cases, if you need to place an implant, there's no space for healing abutment, so two-stage surgery need to be proceeded. As you can see, in, after implant placement, horizontal bone defect occurred and because you need to make bone, sufficient GBR is needed and in that case, primary closure for GBR success needs to be done. So in those case, two-stage surgery needs to be done. As you can see, the key factor for GBR success is primary closure. As you can see, primary closure is essential for GBR success. You do second stage surgery and connect healing abutment after that. For GBR success, the two stage surgery is imperative. As you can see, in the maxilla, there's very little remaining bone. Sinus graft was done. Four to six months, we waited. After that, we placed the implant. We gained a strong initial stability. Immediate loading can be done. But in the case where this cannot be expected, two-stage surgery needs to be done. The patient can use denture meanwhile and mas do mastication. In such cases, two-stage surgery is necessary. In the two-stage surgery, you do incision, drill, place fixture, connect cover screw, and gingiva is sutured. The cover screw, while the fixture osteo integrates, cover, it covers the fixture so that soft tissue and alveolar bone does not grow in. After a certain period, normally that will be two to five months, second surgery will be done. Second incision is made, cover screw is found, removed, healing abutment is connected, and suture is done. Transgingival hole, where prosthesis can go on top of, is formed. The Before final abutment selection, the healing abutment maintains the gingiva open and shapes the soft tissue to the desired form. Please take a look at this video. In lower number 46, anesthesia was done, 15 blade was used to do incision. Flap was retracted, periosteal elevator was used, full thickness retraction was done, following sequence, primary drilling was done, and then Subsequent drilling was done. In the case of this patient, the GBR was necessary, so two-stage surgery was conducted. Mount was removed, cover screw is connected, GBR was done, gingiva was fully covered. This is the two-stage surgery. If you look at the two-stage surgery, X-ray or clinical image is used to check implant position. And then incision is done on gingiva using curette, blade, burr, tissue punch is used to find the cover screw position. Healing abutment is connected and removed. Because it's not fully osteointegrated, I use curette to find cover screw. And then once you find it, cover screw is removed and healing abutment is connected. That is the process. If you look at the clinical case, as you can see, implant has been placed 
Buckley, there was a bone defect. Uh, it was essential to have GBR. GBR was done after that. Non-resorbable cytoplast was covered and suture was done. In the case where GBR is essential, two-stage surgery is done. We waited for some time after three months after primary closure has been achieved. Second surgery was done to remove the non-resorbable membrane. And uh, I found the cover screw position uh, here. Curette and other tools were used to find the position and cover screw was exposed. The cover screw was removed, the healing abutment was connected. Second suture was done after a certain period, approximately a month. The gingiva heals. If you look here, uh, impression was taken, prosthesis was delivered. If you look at the two-stage surgery schedule, you need to consider when you need to do the second surgery. Let's look at the factors determining that. First, bone quality, whether the patient bone is soft or hard. That is one of the determining factors. How strong is the initial stability? If it is weak or very weak, we need to wait a bit longer. If you have done a lot of bone graft, in general, minimum of three months or more needs to be waited. These days, we don't use smooth surface for fixture surface, so in those cases, we don't normally wait that longer. After we do first surgery, yeah, two to six months later, second surgery is done in my case. If there's very little initial stability, and in the case of very soft bone, I wait three, four months. In general, I wait two months and then do secondary surgery. Time schedule for secondary surgery. Normally, there's more soft bone in the upper than lower, so I wait longer. In the case you do GBR, for successful GBR, essentially you need over three months. I don't wait up to six months. In my case, I wait three, four months and do second surgery. <laughs>one stage surgery you do incision once and connect the healing abutment so patient discomfort is reduced and treatment period is also decreases healing abutment is connected and there's higher percentage of infection and there's also possibility of occlusal loading therefore initial stability needs to be over 20 newton centimeters at the very least, you need to have 10 newton centimeter to do one-stage surgery. Because you make incision on gingiva once, this is called one-stage surgery. This is comfortable for the patient and the surgeon. So that is why we prefer one-stage surgery. This is the process. First incision is done. Drilling is done, fixture is placed, healing abutment is connected, and suturing is done. Healing abutment is removed, and the transgingival hole is formed, so there is space for prosthesis. Number 26, one stage surgery was done. Incision was done, periosteal elevator was used to retract the flap following the General method drilling was done. It was considered to be normal bone. No problem in getting initial stability. And final drill was done. You need to do irrigation as you place the implant. Implant was placed to the desired depths, healing abutment was connected, and suture was done. Surgery is done. Is a one surgery, so that is why we call this a one stage surgery. Let's look at the process of one stage surgery. Implant is placed, the healing abutment is connected. Healing abutment has 
a lot of various options, 4.0 millimeter to 7 millimeter, there's different thickness, length. You can choose the healing abutment of your choice and healing abutment will assist in healing and remodeling of adjacent gingiva. Let's look at a clinical case. Incision is done in a general way. You place the fixture. If there is good initial stability, healing abutment is connected. Suture is done. Healing is done and before prosthesis. If possible, this one-time surgery or one-day surgery is ideal. This is what we prefer and patients like. Let's look at the most prominent component in two-stage surgery, a cover screw. Cover screw, after a fixture is placed during osteointegration period, the internal structure of fixture is protected by this. So this is used in two-stage surgery. After placement, we use cover screw to connect and the secondary surgery is done. Cover screw is removed, the healing abutment is connected. Cover screw's shape differs by system. Generally, TS system is used most frequently on the top part. It covers the fixture. It has sealing effect. Below that, it has tapered gap so that it can be easily removed and placed. And there's also a guide at the very bottom to allow easy connection. For cover screw, there are three types depending on the height. In general, 0.4 height short type cover screw, 1.4 millimeter, and 2.0 millimeter cover screw are available. If bone fixture is placed deep into the bone, if the cover screw is placed too deep, it's very difficult to find the position. So depending on the placement depths, you need adjust the height and so that the cover screw reaches appropriate position. There are various heights in cover screw. This is the ideal example. Convex part of cover screw is slightly higher than the bone level or almost to the bone level. This is the ideal way. Depending on the platform of the fixture, if it is mini fixture, you need to use mini cover screw. If it is a regular platform fixture, you need to use that accordingly. If it is switched, it might not get connected or it might get loose. So you need to choose cover screw that fits the platform. Cover screw height. In fixtures placed deep, on top of cover screw, bone grows over, so it may be difficult to remove cover screw, so it may interfere with histocompatibility of tissue and can negatively affect the primary closure. So a cover screw with appropriate height needs to be chosen for primary closure. When we do two-stage surgery, we do GBR a lot. If the cover screw is too high, it may interfere with a tissue's histocompatibility. Clinically, sometimes we use cover screw high. As you can see in the second image, it is placed deep and when GBR is necessary, it does not interfere with primary closure and uh, when you do GBR, it maintains space. In other words, tenting effect is given. It's an example of where cover screw is placed rather high. You cover with membrane and at second surgery, you can see that the bone has healed well. There are things to consider when you connect cover screw. Top of fixture and cover screw, in between that, 
There can be gingival or bone particles. It can cause a gap and prevent sealing. This will cause proliferation of bacteria within fixture and cause inflammation and interfere with osteointegration. Therefore, sealing needs to be done properly. In general, when you tighten with your hands, it is 5 to 8 Newton centimeter. You need to tighten so that sealing is done properly, but if you apply excessive torque, and in the case where initial stability is weak, as you tighten the fixture, you need to make sure it doesn't move and appropriately tighten the cover screw. In the case of two-stage surgery, we do it because there's insufficient initial stability. If you put excessive force, fixture might move. This should be prevented. Next, the most notable component used in one-stage or two-stage surgery, healing abutment, is going to be looked at. Once the fixture is osseointegrated, it helps in healing the gingiva to the level that you can attach prosthesis. Up until that point, it protects the internal structure of fixture and helps he gingival healing. As you can see in one stage surgery, healing abutment is connected after one incision. Healing abutment is key component in one stage surgery. As shown, transgingival hole is created and you can connect the prosthesis on fixture. Transgingival hole creates a space for prosthesis. When you choose healing abutment, you need to choose appropriate thickness. The basic is that the thickness should be the same as the final abutment thickness. If you choose an abutment that is thinner, then as the final abutment goes in, it will pressure the gingiva and can cause pain. On the other hand, if you choose a cover screw that is wider than the abutment that is going to go in later, after you do prosthesis, there can be gingival gap. So the thickness of the final abutment needs to be the same as the thickness of healing abutment. If you use 4 mm fixture, 4.5 healing abutment is used to connect a regular abutment later. If you place 5 or 4.5 fixture and use wide abutment, you should use 5 or 6 thickness healing abutment. As you can see, the larger the healing abutment diameter, the harder the suture becomes and can lead to histocompatibility issues. If the diameter is small, it can be difficult in doing impression taking and it can cause pain when prosthesis is connected. As you can see, I would like to give you a tip. When you do two-stage surgery, even in one-stage surgery, if there is a strong initial stability, first you use a thin healing abutment. You do suture so that you get good histocompatibility. At stitch out, you choose the healing abutment in the size you want so that you remove pain and you can use the healing abutment size of your choice. If healing abutment diameter is large, there can be gap between healing abutment. In those cases, form a Fulacci flap and allow good uh, histocompatibility. And in that area, do crisscross suture and cover the area. And if you connect the prosthesis, you'll be able to uh, avoid food impaction in that area as well. Generally, healing abutment height, the convex area should come approximately 1 to 2 millimeter superior to gingiva. 
precondition is not to interfere with occlusion. It needs to be 1 to 2 millimeter higher than the gingiva. That should be ideal. As you can see, antagonist distance, there needs to be at least a 3 millimeter of clearance. And it needs to come up slightly. On the left, if there is no such clearance, even if it does not come up, it's better than causing harm to osteointegration and interfering occlusion. It's going to heal, and because healing is going to be done, the most important is to secure clearance with the antagonistic tooth. When you tighten healing abutment, if you apply excessive tightening torque, it might be difficult to remove it. If you apply loose tightening torque, healing abutment might fail. So you should tighten with your hands, so approximately 5 to 8 newton centimeters. If initial stability is strong, in order to prevent the failure, using torque wrench, I'd give 15 to 20 newton centimeters. Two stage surgery and one stage surgery's pros and cons. In other words, pro of two stage surgery is con for one stage, and pro for one stage is con for two stage. Let's look at the pros. Pro for two stage is initial stability, and you can prevent epithelial in tissue ingrowth. There is relatively less possibility of inflammation and there's less possibility of failure due to mastication. For one stage surgery, treatment period is reduced and you can uh, predict the prognosis of fixture, no additional surgery is needed and discomfort on the part of patient and surgeon is reduced. The indication for two stage surgery is bad bone density and bad initial stability. For one stage, good bone density, and good initial stability. At least a 10 newton centimeter is required. Two stage surgery healing period because there is two surgeries compared with one stage surgery it's one month or two month longer. I talked about one stage and two stage surgery and relevant factors. Multiple Factors have been considered. As you learn more, you realize that experience is everything. I hope you utilize what you've learned through this lecture. Please remember today's lecture, and I hope you advance further based on your experience. You'll be able to learn more at offline master course. I'm going to come back with a different theme next time. Thank you for watching. 감사합니다.